Hello, everybody. It's the Blizzard Watch Podcast. I'm a good bat. It's me, Bat Rossi. Uh, I'm kind of. We were talking about stuff on the pre-show. It's a thing. It just it it started off with like you know co- with corporate shenanigans, went to evil clowns, and then was bats. And we were not and talking now, about we were not talking about Cyberpunk 2077. No, we were talking wow. about Cyberpunk 2023. Apparently, because that's happening right now in the world you live in. Anyway. We're going to get right into stuff. Uh, Joe is going to be reading things today because Joe is cited and I am not this week. I am. Um, I am. I am. I am Matt's seen eye shaman today. Uh, yes, it is, I, <laughs> yeah, people have done this for me in rating too. So yeah, it is a thing. Uh, before he gets rolling, however, I just wanted to really quickly say thanks to Joe and Liz for being here. Either of you got some quick thing you want to throw out before we start. Carlac is Thank the best you. person ever. Thank you yeah. for being here, Matt. Carlac is the best best person ever. i'm sorry i've been talking a lot about, Star- about starfield and starfield does have some really cool companions nobody touches car nobody Carlac touches carlac the best companion i've ever seen i, I have years. literally i have literally made a carlac deck for magic the gathering because i i just love carlac so much and i even made a like a little primer thing that i hand people that tells them what my deck does and i went and found an artist that had the cutest possible fan art of carlac and it's her doing half of a heart hand so that you can make the other half of the heart hand and that's the <laughs> image for the the handout that i give people but anyway yeah. we're not we're not here to talk about that <laughs> no nope, we are not but it is still cool to know uh joe uh, go ahead and get yeah. us started. So we have a lot of stuff to actually cover because there is surprisingly a lot of events happening now and in the very near future. Uh, first off, as of today and up through the 28th, you can still get your WoW Tabard of Brilliance through the Amazon Prime Gaming. Uh, if you haven't gotten it before, now is your time to log in and get it. It is a uh, white tabard that is in the style of the old WoW TCG uh, turn-ins that you used to actually have to save up points or and redeem points from actually opening packs of cards but it can be yours now free to match your transmog because i don't think there really are any white white uh tabards really aside from like the scarlet crusade one uh, yeah the, the new, scarlet crusade one the new dragonflight one the veldraken one it's not called veldraken is white with like the colors of all the dragon flights on it which something maybe, accord but this is uh, and I think the Summer Games one too, because that that's yeah. white with the gold trim and then the uh, the mm-hmm. rings. But you can go ahead and get it to uh, for it as well, and it is completely free. Um, also, I believe it is of today, and I just want to kind of roll with what today is. Uh, Hearthstone Fall of the Alduar mini set. Liz, you want to tell us about that? Uh, yes. So this is just a mini set. It comes with uh, 38 new cards. The cool thing about mini sets in Hearthstone, you just go and you buy them and you have all of those cards immediately. You don't have to open bunches of packs trying to get them. You just buy the mini set. You have the cards. It costs 2,000 in-game gold or $15. And uh, I don't think that's too bad. The 2,000 in-game gold isn't too bad. So, And it's one of the rare things that you can buy in Hearthstone without spending real money. I like that. I dig that. Um, one of the, besides cards, one of the things it adds is anomalies, which were introduced in Hearthstone Battlegrounds a few weeks ago. These random effects in each game. Uh, this is going to bring anomalies to standard wild twist and arena games with a card called Chogal, the Twilight Chieftain. Uh, y'all may have heard of him before, but now he is in Hearthstone bringing anomalies to the game. Every time you put him in your deck, there is a 25% chance an anomaly will show up in the game. And uh, But for the first week, which is right now, after the mini set launches, all games will have anomalies in them. So you can, uh, and they have all sorts of effects, like uh, both hero, both players' hero powers could cost less. Both players could start with extra cards. Both players have uh, plus one attack on each of their turns. Both players start with start with Yog Saron in their hand. So it's it kind of adds just a a little dash of randomness, which I like because, you know, any any card game can get a little samey after the while. You see the same meta decks. All I do have a question about this because I don't really know much about it. Mm -hmm. You said that he has a 25 percent chance when you put him in your deck. Is that correct? Yes. Correct. Can you have more than one of him? You can only have one of him. Okay. Because I was like, can you stack this thing so you've got I, like a 100% Ch- chance? <laughs> Chogal is a legendary minion, and you can only have one of a legendary in your deck. Okay. So, okay. unfortunately, 
that's the best you get. But for this first week, when everyone is getting an anomaly in their game, if you have Chogal in your deck, you have an additional chance to get two anomalies in your game. You could have extra random weirdness going on. Yeah. I mean, anomalies are good. I like chaos in games like that. It reminds me a lot of... I'm probably going to reference magic a few times. I'm sorry, folks. <laughs> yeah. um, that's one of the reasons I like like things like plane chase and magic, where you go to a plane and sometimes chaos ensues and random things happen because it spices up what is normally a bog standard game. Um, and I like that idea in Hearthstone. I think that's really cool. And I'm I'm happy to see that. And then tying it with Chogall is just thematically appropriate. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, I love Chogall. Words, words, words. The master wants murder. <laughs> Indeed. Hearthstone. Hearthstone has such great themes and story ideas and it always and great art too. It always makes me really sad that they don't kind of go through and build these stories out into something. Uh, like next week, there's also going to be an event in Hearthstone called The Great Yog Escape. And I mean, doesn't that sound awesome? Don't you want to know more about this event? So Mitch is writing the, complex? So Mitch is writing the writing this event, is what I'm hearing. Uh, well, I, I mean I mentioned it to him and he was very excited. But see the problem here is that Hearthstone events follow some really specific patterns. So you'll have an event and the event will have a quest and you'll go and you'll do the first quest and maybe it's like win three matches with Anomaly. Win a match with Chogal in your deck. You know, it'll be quests like that and it's a series of them and as you complete the quests, you earn rewards. You might earn a couple of card packs. You might earn a special appearance for a card. So like it sounds so cool but they don't follow through on that story promise and i really mm-hmm. wish they would because they have so many great ideas i want i want to see the great yog escape i want to know what happens because in my head i'm thinking the great muppet caper only with yog saran in it in kind of his hearthstone crazy incarnation i i want to know more but see i, I was you know, I, I was not. i was totally imagining oh brother where art thou <laughs> but you know with with yog as george clooney but it's still George Clooney's <laughs> voice, but it's Yogg. You know what? So, I would yeah. watch that movie. I, <laughs> I would also watch that movie. Oh, goodness. Uh, so I, is there anything else that's going on with that? Because, I mean, I, this is something that I wish Hots was still in active development for. Oh, yeah. Because, because I think Anomalies would have fit exceptionally well there. Yeah. And I just think Hearthstone kind of scratches that itch of where you have the Blizzard properties, but, you know, take them and make them kind of weird because it's we're taking Warcraft lore and twisting it in all sorts of weird ways in Hearthstone. Because the fall of Alduar, the whole theme is like, okay, Yogg is escaping Alduar. Alduar has officially fallen. The old gods are out and have taken over. And, you know, but in that comic kind of funny Hearthstone way, um, one of the things uh, Yogg Saran can do in one of his card incarnations is... You know, you can randomly spin the wheel of Yog saron which is like a a kind of carnival wheel shows up on your on your screen and it spins it. And depending on where it stops, you get a different, completely random effect for better or for worse. And it's like it's a Yog. Whenever Yog shows up, it's truly let chaos take the reins. And it's fun. I just wish we could get you know more of the story told out in some way. Hearthstone hasn't really been doing that, but it still has so cool ideas i love it there's okay. gonna have to be at some point a dark moon fair hearthstone crossover oh, wasn't there already one there stuff from the there dark has, stuff from hearthstone happens in wow oh the dark moon that, fair there has been a dark moon fair hearthstone expansion yeah i meant um, the other way around yeah, yeah. You, you know i meant like some stuff from hearthstone shows up in wow via the dark moon carnival because let's be honest the dark moon fair uses giant eye imagery so much <laughs> i think of the old gods every time i go there Mm, Which might be why my eye doctor trip is so horrible. <laughs> that's that's probably not the best thing to have. In- no. Think think something more positive. Maybe it couldn't hurt. Well, that's Alduar. Uh, and if you're playing Hearthstone and you're enjoying it and you're getting through those anomalies or just having a good time, let us know. Let us know what you think about it. I'm actually I'm always curious to see what players think of these events. Uh, we also, as of today, because we are recording on the 19th of September, is Wow Pirates Day because it is National Talk Like a Pirates Day, which is also National IT uh, uh, Workers Day. 
Uh, this is very deliberate. I am absolutely confident in this. Uh, but this year is something a little bit new added to the mix, which is a brand new dragon riding reward. Uh, so if you go ahead and do your normal talk like a pirate day or pirate day uh, things and you go talk with uh, what is it? Dread pirate. What's the dread pirate's name? I can never remember. De mm, I don't remember. De Meza? I think it's I think it's De Meza. Uh, you dress up like your pirate. You talk. You share a drink. Uh, and as long as you are in the proper garb and you look like a uh, a pirate, uh, which I believe if you share a drink, you turn into one, uh, you can buy the Highland Drake Pirate's Day Armor Manuscript for 50,000 gold. Uh, and it's a really cool uh, little piece of bling that puts a uh, pirate's treasure chest on the back of your seat uh, on your Highland Drake. So if you want to fancy yourself doing some dragon riding dressed as a pirate, Go ahead and get yourself that. It only costs you 50,000 gold, which is not really a lot, all things considered. The other thing is that's only available today, so I'm sorry if you aren't listening live, but it is next year. Maybe. It's next like year. a one-day thing? It's a one-day yeah, it's, it's it's like, holiday. Literally, it's 24 hours. It's the shortest holiday in WoW. Yes. Has been for a long time. Uh, mm -hmm. So, yeah, hopefully you can get your hands on that, and if not, well, there is next year. Uh, to, as of the recording of this on the 20th, we have the Diablo Immortal Dark Rebirth update. Uh, Liz, do you want to talk about that one? Oh, no. You're making me talk about things. Um, yes, yeah, this is what happens when no. I'm in charge. Oh, no. I, I keep having to talk about things that I brought up that we should talk about. Um, you know, I have the, kind of a love-hate relationship with Diablo Immortal. Probably, I think a lot of you listening to this do. The problem is Diablo Immortal has so many cool ideas. I love it. It's there's so much cool stuff. Dark Rebirth is basically taking everyone back to Tristram going. Mm -hmm. uh, so you make a chilling descent into the depths of Tristram Cathedral. There is a new Alley of Blood team based PvP activity, some new legendary gems. But uh, what is really cool is you're going back to Tristram. You are going to. Of course, you're back in the Tristram Cathedral. That means you're probably fighting the Butcher because that's uh just that's just what happens. You wander around in Dungeons and Diablo, any Diablo game, you're gonna meet him eventually. And it just uh, it just has such cool theming going on with this sort of return to Tristram. I think Diablo Immortal is such a great game, but the problem is it is so hard to play with the monetization and the way you're pushed into spending money to upgrade those gems, particularly because there are new legendary gems you want to collect and upgrade. Uh, and the seasons are like 30 days each. It is so hard to play yeah. enough to progress yeah. through a season. It's, it's grueling, but the game continues to come out with regular content with really cool ideas. So I, I love it, but I'm still, it's, it's still very hard to play. Yeah, I would say that it, very much in my case with Diablo Immortal, I played it for like two months pretty pretty solidly. Yeah. And I was enjoying it. I was having a good time. But just, it was like having an annoying friend over who just would <laughs> not stop trying to recruit you to his multi-level marketing deal. Yeah. It's like, you know, and I was like, just like, <laughs> I, I, you know, if I give you the $5, just will you leave me alone? No, I'll bother you more. Oh then I'm not going to give you the $5. I'm just going to stop playing. Sorry. I thought maybe the way out of this, but no, no, there isn't. So yeah, <laughs> that, that I have to agree. That was just that it, it was kind of, kind of broke my heart. Mm -hmm. Like, cause, cause it really does have some really cool ideas in it. It, it it's the, it's the Diablo and the we all wanted. And it's, it's good except for like this hideous thing grafted to it. It's honestly like if you saw a friend with a giant, like a human head biting into their neck and tentacles coming out of it where its neck should be wrapping around their body. And you just saw it everywhere <laughs> you went with them. And you'd be like, Hey, Hey, are you going to, you're going to get that checked out? He's like, ah, oh, it's fine. Would you like some orbs? Sorry. Every so often he makes me orbs. So yeah, I, I don't know where I'm going with this other than the, the I, I, I was just letting you cook, man. I was just letting you cook. <laughs> I don't know where I'm going with this, but or <laughs> uh, starting on 920 as well is going to be the first of the Wow Brew Fest, which will run until October 6th. So I don't don't know if they've announced anything new for it this year. Uh, I would I maybe hope that there's something that ties into the Dragon Isles uh, a little bit more, but maybe probably not because it's sort of one of those things that is 
remained largely static for a while. I don't think we've heard any other rumblings, right, Liz or Matt? Uh, I I do believe that there is, again, going to be some special armor you can buy for one of your dragon rights. Blizzard has mm-hmm. done some like little bitty updates to some of these, so I believe there's going to be some new armor. I'm not sure what it looks like, uh, but but yes, somewhere, somewhere. Okay. Uh, and also starting on the 20th and or sorry, the 26th and running through the end of October is going to be the Wow Turbulent Timeways event, uh, which I think is actually a ton of fun. Yeah, they had it, it before so and they're bringing it back, and it is really cool. Yeah, and if if so, for the folks at home that maybe don't know what that is, uh, it is an expansion-spanning event that takes you on time-walking journey throughout all of the expansions that we've had from Cataclysm forward, I believe. And I believe it starts with Cataclysm. If the rotation is stays the same, it starts with Cataclysm, goes to Mists, then Warlords, Legion, then it goes to Burning Crusade, and then Wrath. I don't know if it's going to stay the same. That's what it was last time. Um but either way, it's going to start again, and you can go and relive some of the glory days with your friends as you uh, tear through some of the time-walking events from there, which I I just think it's fun. I think it's nice to give players that are maybe newer to the game uh, some of, uh, maybe, a, I guess, a, a brief tour of some of the places that we spent, in some cases, a very long time. <laughs> yeah, I also think it's really cool because it's, it's because time-walking always gives you a chance at that, you know, reasonably decent uh, epic reward at the end. It's a ni- it's a nice way to catch up um, without it necessarily being something you have to grind it too much. There's a lot of catch up mechanisms in WoW right now, so it's no longer the the giant draw it used to be, but it is still nice. It is, in my opinion. The other thing is during time walking weeks, which will be this entire you know month month and a half of turbulent timeways, is that it's you get a boost to XP to um, sorry. Uh, reputation yes. for all of the relevant uh, relevant reputation. So it's a great time to get out there, do quests, do whatever there is to do to earn those rewards for the older content. It makes it a whole lot easier. Last time, last time during Turbulent Timeways, I finally went and did the Timeless Isles thing and got that like a golden serpent mount. Mm-hmm. It's so cool. I'm probably never going to write it because i don't like how that wiggling motion they do but i have it i can yeah. check that off my list and move on with my life you can live in your eternal pokemon vault <laughs> yes indeed it can yeah it is it is always nice to scratch the collector it, mm-hmm. it is also mm-hmm. the turbulent timeways does also reward loot uh for you as well as you make your way through it and i believe as padilla is putting in chat at the time of this recording uh, that it gives heroic raid loot instead of normal tier raid loot. So it is also a nice little additional bonus for you to go through uh, as you get your, I believe it, it is going to be that weekly quest that you can go to the NPC in Veldraken, uh and pick it up and do X number of dungeons and get the loot, which is uh, a, a nice, easy way to shore up some of the gaps, or maybe you just finish leveling a uh, an alt or, you know, popping back on with a, you haven't been on for a while and you want to get yourself a couple pieces of gear. There's six chances on top of everything else, possibly from the, uh, the vault that you might get from any other activities you do. Yeah. It's, it's really nice. Yeah. Uh, on the 28th of this month, uh, this fine month of September, the Diablo two ladder season five will be going live. Uh, so there are different ladders that you can play through in each season. If I'm, if I'm reading the article from a certain website that we may or may not be responsible for putting up there, which has some great content. Y'all should check it out. Um, there's the pre-expansion ladder, which is a standard version of ladder play that encompasses playing only with the original four acts, the pre-expansion hardcore ladder, which is the same, but hardcore. Uh, you have the traditional ladder, which is, uh, basically everything in the, and also encompasses playing all five acts. Uh, including the Lord of Destruction expansion, and then a hardcore version of that. Uh, so you can relive some of that and, and grind your way to the top of the ladder to see if you can be the first one up the mountain. Uh, very reminiscent of how it was back in ye olden days. I don't know if there's much else to add to that. No, it's uh, it can be a fun ride, and it's I find it interesting how much hype there is for Diablo to ladder seasons because you would think you know this is this is a this is a well aged game at this point but no people still get super excited about running new diablo ladder seasons and uh it's it's fun to see people going out there and having fun you made it sound like whiny indoor cheese (laughs) i mean 
you don't want to call it old. You don't want to hurt the game's feelings. But but it is uh it it's been around for a little tiny while and uh but no, people still love to play Diablo 2 even over Diablo 3 or Diablo 4. So, yeah. I mean, it's been a thing forever for a reason. Yep. All right. Well, also uh, in the next coming weeks, and this is going to be a little bit further out from now, which is, uh, I believe it is the uh, October 9th, I believe it, or is it now till October 9th, the Overwatch 2 uh, anniversary? I'll let Liz clarify on that one. That is two day through October 9th, two day as we are recording this, which is September 19th. Uh, yes, it is. It has been one year since Overwatch 2 launched. I believe its uh, official date is in early October. And uh, yes, they are having an anniversary event. I um, I, I'm, I want to play it like really badly. <laughs> I still can't. Mm. Blizzard, please let me let me play your game. Fix it so I can play your game. I would love it forever. It'd be nice. Um, but I have I mean, either have either of you had a chance to try it out? I know Matt, you may not with the the eye the eye the situation. Fact, yeah, between the motion sickness and the fact that I've literally spent the past week being anxious about, then experiencing, then recovering from eye surgery. <laughs> no, I haven't had time. Sorry, I don't actually have the ability to make lightning sounds, which is fair. <laughs> Um, I do not play Overwatch. You know, the the FPS is not my genre of game. I'm I'm in it for the story, which is why uh, so disappointed that their big single player, well, not single player, their story mode didn't get rolled out. As are we all, but we're not gonna mm-hmm. we're not we're not gonna commiserate about that. No, we're gonna try to make the folks that are enjoying the game uh, a little bit happier by also letting them know that from now until October second, uh, as of the time of this recording. Uh, you can go to Twitch and any of the their Twitch drops are back. In this case, you can get five tier skips for Overwatch 2 uh, just by watching relevant content with your drops enabled, which is uh, an interesting thing. I like Twitch drops. Which is? Oh, I don't know where that came from. Thanks, Matt. Sorry. You keep saying which is and I'm like, which is? Um, but I do like I do like the idea that they're adding other things to Twitch drops besides just random cosmetics. And the idea of having some five tier skips inside of it is uh, it's a nice little add on. So there's that. If you do play uh, Overwatch 2, you can throw that up on uh, maybe a second monitor as you're playing and, you know, earn yourself some rewards uh, on uh, now through. I believe it's October 12th. Diablo 4 of a million weapon bundle will be available on Amazon game or Amazon Prime Gaming. Uh, which is another one of those wonderful things that if you happen to have it, uh, it's more transmog for your uh, Diablo 4 needs. Stick- I, I believe this is a necromancer weapon, which is like a an offhand a book uh, and a rogue uh, crossbow of some sort that are, I as I recall, they are both very spiky. They're very spiky. What I really some love people- is the word vermilion getting used. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm not. That's not sarcasm. It's not one of my jokes. Uh, vermilion was the pigment that was used up until like the 19th, early 20th century. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's often called cinnabar as mm-hmm. well, because it's from the powdered mineral cinnabar, which is mercury sulfide. And what's really cool about it is it's an orange red color. It looks like what we call orange red in the box of crayons, but it's 11% brighter. Hmm. And I just, it is one of those things that when you see or hear the word vermilion, either you have no idea because it hasn't been used since like 1902 or you're immediately seeing that image of that color. And unfortunately, from what I can tell, the gear doesn't look vermilion. No, at all. I don't There's nothing think vermilion it is. about it, uh, which I, I get. Cause you know, in, in, in Diablo four, you can customize the color of your gear, not your weapons, unfortunately, but your gear, you can customize the color of. So there- yeah. There, these two things are silvery with kind of blue purple accents, so kind of the opposite of vermilion. Yeah. yeah, but it's still a really great word. It is one of those words that just conjures up a a period. It, it feels like a gothic novel. So yeah, I see why they chose it. It definitely seems an appropriate name for a Diablo, a, a pack that's that's kind of coming out before the season of blood so yeah i i think it should at least be like a red bow instead of a silver purple bow i agree fair 
All right. Well, speaking of spiky things, because this is actually relevant and a (laughs) wonderful segue, uh, on the 10th of October, the Wrath Classic Patch 3.4.3 launches and Phase 4 begins. Uh, And what does that actually entail? Ice Crown Citadel. That is uh, going to take things to the Lich King himself and climb the steps of Ice Crown. Someone someone tell me you recorded Liz saying that. Yes, I did. That was like the best... Literally best, in my job. The best <laughs> version of Ice Crown Citadel. That should be on every video of Ice Crown Citadel from, from now on. It should just be Lid saying, and there should be like a jazz beat in the background. Like, Ice Crown Citadel. It was it was perfect. It was perfect. I'm you act, sorry. You act like I won't do this. I want you to do this. I am not kidding. This is not a joke. Well, I'm, I mean, the joke in that I'm loopy on pain meds, but it's not a joke. I'm I'm not sure what I did, but I'm glad you enjoyed it. It was amazing. I seriously am still going. Oh my god! If only I was cutting videos. You have brought you have brought Matt much joy. Uh, but there, it's not just Ice Crown Citadel that's happening no. as well, right? We're also getting some dungeons, or at oh, least oh yeah, the, the three yeah. tie-in dungeons, absolutely, yeah. Yeah, so we're getting mm-hmm. new mm-hmm. new regular and Titan Rune dungeons. So you're going to get yeah. the uh, the Frozen Halls, halls of Reflection. Yeah, the, the Halls of Reflection. Yep. The uh, Pit of Saronite. The pit, I think it's actually the Pit of Saron. Uh, then it's yeah, it's Pit of Siren. No, it's before Pit of Siren's the, the big <laughs> whirlwind of, of souls, right? It's Frozen Halls, Forge of Souls, Pit of Siren. I'm sorry. Isn't Frozen Halls? Yeah, no, it's no no it's, uh, Frozen Fro- Forge of Souls, Pit of Siren, Halls of Reflection. Yes, there yeah. we go. Pit of Siren is the one with the everyone getting being slaves. Yeah, it's it's really not great. Don't don't go to the Pit of Siren. But you know, as a dungeon, it's fine. Although I'll admit, <laughs> when I was tanking, I think Pit of Siren was my least favorite. Just because of the 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 one where everybody wants to just pull all the monsters up to one place and, and AOE them down, they never want to fight them as pulls. Mm-hmm. The ramp up, I hated tanking that. Well, if, if you're new to the pit the pit of siren because you're doing this event, please be nice to your tank. Don't make them tank the entire thing. Just pull, do the pulls. Well, I guess just it's I guess it's good too because if you're going to be going in as the Titan Rune Dungeon version of them, you're probably going to want to do that because they're adding a new defense protocol as well, uh, defense protocol Gamma, which will uh, go alongside Alpha and Beta. Uh, these are uh, protocols that make things well harder for you. <laughs> it's, it's it's really the Mythic Plus of it is. Wrath Classic. Uh, each one will increase damage and health of monsters. And have an additional effect, kind of depending on the dungeon. Um, and we're not talking like a small increase of health, too. We're talking like 200, 300% health increases. Like, yeah. It's, I, it's big. It's like 215% health and uh, plus 70% damage. So it's, it's big. But uh, the good thing is loot also gets bumped up. So if you do these Titan Room dungeons with Defense Protocol Gamma, you will be getting 10 player uh, normal mode trial of the crusader gear. So you can go in and do these hard dungeons and get pretty good raid gear. And they've been doing this as they've rolled out wrath classic phases, kind of each tier they've added a new set of Titan runes that are harder and you can do them and you can get like the last tier, the previous tier of raid gear. And kind of buff you up so you can conquer the new tier if you want to, or just keep doing Titan Rune Dungeon. Yeah, Yeah. um, I think it's cool. I I like it, and uh, it's something that I kind of hope that I understand that the Mythic Plus affixes do something like that. But Mm -hmm. I would absolutely be chuffed if we could get Titan Rune Dungeon versions of like Mythic Plus stuff. I think it would be a ton of fun. Uh, what really interests me about this too is that in a way it feels like an alternate universe version of what might have been done instead of Mythic Dungeons. Yeah, agreed. And actually, I think it's one of the we don't we don't do ten man dungeons anymore in mm. in World of Warcraft, so there's no need to make ten man dungeons stay relevant. But since they have them in in WoW Classic, this is a really great way to make the the gear from those things stay relevant. Uh, it is it's a nice way to make those items still drop and still be available to me. i i think it's really great uh, it is something that i find a, it's a again it isn't necessary anymore uh it but it's an alternate way it could have gone if they'd kept 10 man dungeons instead of making flex so yeah, uh, yeah. I, I am super excited for it yeah but i think that's it for events i don't think i've missed anything on that liz can yell at me uh if i have but i think we covered all that and now we're going to go on to some news items 
Uh, first things first, for I know this is going to excite some folks, uh, if not a lot of folks. In patch 10.2, we have been informed that we will be getting ordinary flying mounts in the Dragon Isles with a brand new Pathfinder achievement. Uh, and we have a lovely article on the website that will tell you exactly what you need to do in order to get that. Uh, but I am super excited because it makes it so much easier for me to get screenshots again. I cannot True. wait because True. I love dragon riding, but trying to get a screenshot as you're zipping by at Mach 17 is really <laughs> impossible. Yeah, so. I'm not I'm not Francis Gary Powers, guys. I, I am not flying a U-2 spy plane very, very high over the Caucasus Mountains. I, I cannot get a picture while also keeping my mount in the air. I just, no, I'm sorry. I'm just not that good. Yeah, it is, it is nuts how hard that can be. Although, you know, this does actually make... A, I was thinking about this the other day when I was reading this particular item. I think this is one of the best expansions we've had for mobility. And... Hmm. Because when is the last time we've had flying from the start? Yeah. Yeah, not since I think it was a Wrath, wasn't it? I think Maybe it was Cataclysm. It, I think it was Cataclysm. Um, yes, it was Cataclysm, you're right. And even though it was Dragon Riding, and I know a lot of people lamented it, uh, I didn't keenly miss flying, but this is also really interesting because this is very clearly the first expansion we've ever had that has been designed for flying from the very first instance of like inception versus other content where previous expansions were, were built with the idea of making you go through the ground motion first. And okay. so like everything was built really close to the ground. And this one was like Dragonflight is more about going places and the joy of flying and like zipping through mountains and through the trees and skimming the ground and threading the needle. And now having regular flying added in in 10.2 i think we can finally start to really appreciate sort of the craft of that because we get to actually slow down and really observe a bunch of that and i'm looking forward to it I don't know if i'm any- just looking forward i'm just looking forward to being able to use all of my cool mounts i have so many cool mounts i mean it's cool to ride a dragon but i have so many other mounts and i haven't been able to ride any of them you know especially the ones that we got from like the, uh, the training post Why can't i ride my annoying robot skull <laughs> Or all those training post mounts that we've been gathering for the last X months. Exactly. Yeah. I I want to break those out. I want to show off my cool mount collection sitting in Veldraken, and I have not been able to do that lately. So yeah. Uh, Diablo four boosts XP on World Tiers three and <clears throat> excuse me and World Tier four, uh, which is actually really nice for the folks that are running on that because it looks like it was just kind of a, a little bit low. A little bit low. <laughs> Uh, which I think looks on world tier three, it's getting increased by 5% and world tier four, it's getting increased by 15%. Uh, and there was, Liz, I want to throw, throw a bit of inside baseball out here. Uh, mm-hmm. if that post is still there tonight, I am definitely writing it. You know, the one I'm talking about top of the, yes, yeah, yes, I do. Yeah. I was like, I was too sick today to write it, but I was looking at it going, Oh, as soon as I'm healed, <laughs> if you're still there, I'm writing you. So, uh, yeah. Yes. I know exactly what post that is, too, because I actually look at these things. Uh For for those of you who want to know a little more of that inside baseball, uh, I put list of posts up for people to claim and write. And one of them is about how leveling in Diablo 4 is maybe a tiny, itty bitty bit too slow because it it feels like it is. It's so slow. It is not engineered for people who have other things they must do. Um, Mm. whether it be other games they must play or just simply going to the doctor repeatedly in a two day period. And it's just like, I got an hour guys. I've only got an hour. There is no way I can get anything done in an hour. I could do one dungeon, one dungeon. So yeah, I I am happy to hear that they are doing this and they should do more of it. And not only are they increasing the XP, but apparently there was a bug fix that went out that was for fixing the issue where Seeds of Hatred could be acquired at an excessive rate in certain scenarios, which I don't even know what that means. Can one of you explain that to me? Uh, well, Seeds of Hatred are the PvP currency. Yeah, I was I, just thinking. Yeah, I, I wasn't aware about the excessive rates thing. I mean, they drop pretty rapidly if you go into the into the Fields of Hatred areas. But... Uh, I usually just don't. <laughs> yeah. And the thing about the Seeds of Hatred is basically it's it's the it's the currency you, you, you use in, in Diablo 4. It's the thing that you exchange to get the dust, right? The red dust? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, yeah, I, if it's... You- I've, done a, I've done, like, a couple hours of PvP in Diablo 4, 
And the the reason I stopped was because it was getting to feel a little bit too much Alterac Valley. Mm. In that there's no real objective to any of this other than, you know, if you're the person getting the red, trying to get red dust, you don't want to fight anybody. And if you are not, you absolutely want to fight everybody. So it was, I didn't notice that the, uh, the acquisition was too fast. There might be a trick to it that I don't know. Uh, quite frankly, a lot of times I'm always like, why is this dungeon so popular? And everyone's like, oh yeah, there's a trick where you can just do this and just farm the XP. And I'm like, oh, I didn't know that. Uh, so <laughs> it could be that. Uh, but from what I saw doing it, it was just, you know, you'd have the you'd have the uh, seeds and you'd be running to an altar to, you know, go to the you go to the altar of extraction with it and you turn it in for the red dust. Um, so maybe there's like some trick to people were like getting to do that without anybody jumping them. I don't know. Yeah, because it takes time to do that conversion to red dust. And yeah, I you believe... have to stand there and you're vulnerable. Yeah. And if you, get, if you get hit, oh no, if they kill me, I'll lose my my everything. So yeah. Yeah, I believe it sends a notification to everyone else in the fields of hatred. Hey, this oh, dude yeah. is purifying some seeds of hatred. Yeah. Don't Please you want to claim those dust. for yourself? Yeah. <laughs> yes. So, uh, hmm. All right. And now for one that Liz and I were talking about a little bit before the uh, the podcast recording, uh, speaking of Diablo four, uh, the blizzard devs have told us that season two has so much content that we're going to need to watch four live streams in order to understand it all. Oh, uh, correction. It's two live streams that are two hours each for four hours of live streams. Ah, four hours of live streams. Mm -hmm. Nothing. I'm so glad that this is a video podcast. So you can all see me bending over my desk, <laughs> cradling my head in my hands. Uh, well, one hand, because my other hand is pushing the push to talk button so you can hear me <laughs> as I say this. But, you know, you, you can see me because it's good that you, it's good that you can see this because you should know just how tired I am. Rod, Mr. Ferguson, sir, I'm I'm a fan. I've loved a lot of what you've done. Please, for the love of all that's holy or for the love of all that's unholy. I don't care at this point. Please let somebody write this up, you know, for you. It works for you guys. Yeah, and I mean, I think the intention, we were talking about this before, uh, the intention is that they're kind of hoping that people will watch this and then condense it down for them, which seems like a weird thing to do to me. Like, So you you mean it seems weird to you, yeah, but yeah. to me, I hear you say that, and I agree totally. It is a weird thing to do to me, Blizzard. I don't <laughs> want to have to continuously condense everything it's they say. And we talk about this a lot, especially with like, as we're getting older as gamers, like we don't necessarily mm -hmm. always have, you know, four hours to sit down and, and watch live streams. Like we talk about getting drops from Twitch. Cats, they get hungry. But we're talking, we talk about Twitch drops and we talk about putting them up on your second monitor or, or just having them run in the background so that like, you can earn them. Cause you're not really paying attention. You got other stuff you got to do. That's a lot. That's a considerable amount of time to devote to it. And then you have to hope that websites or news, news places or content creators in general are accurately transcribing it versus just doing both. Just, just release a transcript, just write it out. Like, I don't, I don't I, understand that decision really. I, I will say that they haven't said they're doing live streams instead of blog posts, but in the past, that's how they've done it, that they've done some intensive stuff in live streams and either not posted it, posted about it or posted it much later, which does make it difficult to access this information. If you don't sit down and watch the whole live stream, because you don't know if, you know, the interesting part shows up in at 45 minutes or an hour and 45 minutes, you've got to watch the whole thing or you're counting on new sites like us at Blizzard Watch writing down the interesting stuff for you. And it just it, it feels like maybe Activision Blizzard could do that themselves. So we do not have to shift through four hours of live streams to you know, get information that could be covered in a blog post and be easier to reference and easier to understand. So it's like, yeah, you're going for that Twitch engagement, but it's also, it's a little frustrating. Yeah. I mean, you can do both. Like you yeah. can go for the Twitch engagement and get the folks that have the time to do that because that will happen. And then, you know, a day or two later, release a transcript or a post about it. That makes yeah. that lets that information out for, for those of us that can't. I'm going to say this. Um, I, and again, I know that it's a live blog. I mean, it's a live stream. So we, we mm -hmm. know that it's to a certain degree, it's improvised, but you guys have, you guys have internal memos where you come up, you break down what you want to talk about. Y you know 
what you're going to talk about. You don't have to do a transcript. You know, you do not have to sit there and have somebody like type out everything you guys are saying as you're saying it. Have somebody just sit down and take the internal memos and summarize them. Mm-hmm. Like that's that's it. That's all you really need to do. The the real the real reason something that that Liz has talked about a lot. It's not necessarily even because we're too lazy to watch four hours. I mean, I am. But, but it's a lot to ask. Want, but it, but it's not even that though. It's the fact that you guys get up there and kind of because you're, you know, it's a live stream and you're in the moment, you say things that directly contradict other things you've said. Uh, yeah. In, and the, the Diablo, or even the Diablo team, the Diablo team has literally done that already. The Diablo four team, they'll be doing a live stream and they'll say one thing early in the live stream and something contradictory late in the live stream. And it's like, okay, what's, what's the actual information, but they don't write down the actual information. Yeah. So we know for sure. There's no source to go back to say, hey, well, they say this here. And it, and sometimes that can be even hard when there is a source to go back to, because both if the sources says one thing, but the, you know, general director of the whole game is saying something else, you can't just ignore him. Mm-hmm. So it, it can be a lot of, oh, OK, we need another statement. I, I just all I'm saying. And, and again, I know I'm, I'm just being a little hyperbolic before. Again, sorry, pain med. But in, in sincerity here, all you need to do is give us just the scaffolding Mm -hmm. just give us like this is this is the general direction this is going these are the these are the bullet points that way i don't it just may it makes it easier if i'm going to sit and watch the video if i know what to be listening for Mm -hmm. what what are the what is the bare bones i really do think that putting out a blog post with just that information it's great it's great for people who don't really have time like one of the my friends uh, plays a lot of Diablo four, but they play it at like four o'clock in the morning when their kid is up because they have a new baby. Hmm. Um, so I promise you most of their attention is focused on the baby. They're playing Diablo just to have something to do until the kid goes to sleep. So take pity on my friend who does not have neither he nor his wife have the mental acuity to follow a four hours of live stream right now. It just isn't, it isn't going to happen. They're, they're like goldfish. Mentally, when they're not focused on the baby, they have the, the attention span of a parrot, an angry parrot. <laughs> so, so come on, just for those of us who, for whatever reason, four hours is a big ask. Give us a give us a framework. Give us a scaffolding. Yeah. And I I want to add that the Diablo team isn't saying this like, yes, you must out- watch four hours of live streams. Oh, yeah, they're not they're, the devil or anything. Yeah, yeah. well, but but they're also saying this like, hey, how exciting. There's so much content here that it's four hours. It's going to take us four hours to explain this. And they're all excited about it. And I, I hear this and I feel very tired because four hours is a lot to watch. And uh, and if they're not if they're not also supporting it with blog posts, it's uh, it's it, it sounds very difficult. It's difficult to keep up with what's going on Diablo 4 because, you know, you it's get a huge. lot of mixed messages. There's so much out there. You get mixed messages. And I just the communication can be a little confusing. It can. I think we can all agree on that. Or lack thereof, right? Mm. So, all right. But I think that's it for events. And I think that's it for news items, unless there's anything else that you can think of. No. All right. Then we for do tomorrow have. Tomorrow is Cyberpunk 2077. The patch 2.0 that's not sure <laughs> <laughs> no but we are excited about that uh but matt if you want to do the thing then we can maybe get into some questions oh right okay wow now he's referring this is amazing it's i now it's i know a what it's role reversal like. yeah <laughs> if you guys have questions for us here at blizzard watch um you can ask us by a multitude of ways including you can email us uh the email address is podcast singular at blizzardwatch.com with the subject line podcast or blizzard watch so we know it's for this show um you can also go to our discord we have two channels for you discordians uh really into <laughs> 1970s occult movements um you can go to our patreon q and podcast questions channel if you're a patron and uh that's basically we look there first for questions because that's our way of rewarding you Uh, for supporting us which is great we love it your support allows us to continue to do this show but we do we do grasp that there's a lot going on in the world right now a lot of things demanding people's time and attention and support if you can support us in non-financial ways we still want to hear from you and that's why we have the the non-patron the just the q and podcast questions channel which you can go to and ask questions and also look um 
We also do some social media interacting. If you are directly on our Patreon, you can ask questions. And Dan, our beloved uh, guy who handles mechanical stuff under the hood type thing, Dan will get those questions to us when he can. Uh, and so we do look at those too. Any way you want to ask us a question, we're game to at least try. So thank you very much. And now, Joe. All right. Well, I'm going to go ahead and read these since I am. I have the power. All Ooh. right. Uh, this He's one. got the touch. <laughs> That's I was. Gets <laughs> I, I mean that I love that reference. I could. I was also going to make a, uh, a who to master Leroy reference, but you know, there's like four people that listen to us that would understand that movie reference. Uh, this one comes from Tetsemi. Uh, what is your favorite drink and favorite food slash snack to have during long play sessions? Also, what is your favorite food to make or have made for you, Liz? Uh, well, long play sessions. I mean, I am a big fan of sodas because i like something fizzy but if you're doing a long play session the most important thing to do is stay hydrated which doesn't mean sodas it means drinking good old-fashioned water so uh if you're sitting down to play say the latest diablo season or you know just sitting down to watch four hours of diablo for live streams you know get yourself a bottle of water and take sips occasionally Okay, what about what about food? Do you have a snack that you like? I really don't. It's very difficult to snack and game because, you know, you get greasy fingers that you're getting, getting on your keyboard. Um, probably goldfish crackers. I'm a big fan of goldfish, and they aren't really greasy. So that's usually safe, but you can still get crumbs everywhere. So you got to be careful. Any snack, Fair. you got to be careful. What about you, Matt? Um, I gave up caffeine for a long time, but then I found out that for uh, ADHD, which I have, uh, caffeine does not act as a stimulant. Correct. It actually allows us to go to sleep. Yeah. Which kind of explained about a lot of my insomnia. So I'm, I'm actually back on the caffeinated beverages thing. What I do is I usually have, like, I will take a two liter bottle of Diet Coke. Uh, and then I will basically, I put a ton of ice into my thing. I've got like a, this thing's like a liter and, and a half. I put in like 12 really big ice cubes. They're, they're massive. They're like the kind that fit in like a, a, a cocktail. Like we get an old fashioned has the one giant ice cube in it. They're that kind. They're that size. I have 12 of them in here. I put about half uh, diet soda to half water. And I put a little bit of, of blackberry and cherry meal in not enough to like just enough to, to cut the taste of, of aspartame or sucralose or whatever they're using to, to flavor this stuff. Uh, because I mean, diet sort of, taste. it does, <laughs> it really does. So I put that stuff in just, just to cut the taste a little bit, just so I don't, don't have the full on diet soda taste. And I'll drink that first. And then when that runs out, you fill it with water and, and you just, just fill it straight with water and that'll get the, the little bit of dregs of soda that was in. You drink that. It's mostly <laughs> just flavored water at that point. Then I do go with water again. And by this point, I usually have to urinate. it because this thing is a liter and a half. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, that's when I have a bio. Another thing about ADHD, I don't know if you guys knew, I didn't know this, but apparently I've been doing it my whole life. As long as I'm sitting down, I cannot feel the bladder telling me I have to urinate. Yes, that is a very common ADHD thing. So it's not until I stand up or move up. And then all of a sudden it hits you. Yeah, like you guys have had, like we've been doing shows where I've literally had to bolt out and get to the bathroom and not tell you I left. Uh, cause I don't have time. So I've actually had to do stuff like to ask Liz a question and then run, um, and hope to God I come back. Like I'm listening, listening. Can I hear the mic, the headphones? Do I hear a silent period? Uh, so <laughs> that's all to say that from, it's very fraught drinking. I have to do a lot of it, but I'm, I'm always very aware of the, the downsides of it. as for snacks. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm a, I'm a snack. I, I don't want to use the word that I would normally use in 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 alone because you know me and my wife can say anything we want to each other but you guys need yeah I owe you some decorum so your I gourmand snack I no I no because that requires taste I don't have <laughs> anything like taste like I have taste and the ability I can taste things I don't have good taste I I am the kind of person who'd be like hey I got a box of these new weird German pretzels you want to try it? where'd the pretzels go oh was I not well, eat the whole bag Matt that was a that was a five pound bag. <laughs> oh, sorry, they're going now. They were good, but a little crunchy. To be like, fair, like, to be fair, you are a barbarian. So I mean, like yeah. it just makes sense. I, I'm a reasonably large fella. Uh, but yeah, I, I so I would say there are days where I want to make my own. Like I, I absolutely love when I like I kind of make up a little like you know, slice up some cheese, uh, slice up some, you know, like like pepperoni or salami, 
and have some crackers. Some days I'm like that. And some days I am like, I'm going to jam my hand as far into this bag of jalapeno and cheddar Doritos as I can get it. And then I'm going to say F it and pour the thing in my mouth. Like I, 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 I go from decorum to, to non. I cannot have grapes in my house because grapes will kill you. Yes. Did you know that? Grapes, grapes are and, deadly to dogs. Grapes raisins because they're obviously grapes. Uh, yeah. A whole bunch of other stuff as well. Yeah. You can't can't have those things in the house. So my, this is a sadness for me because grapes and raisins used to be some of my favorites. Like I, I so yeah, can't have that. So uh, I am, I'm getting into blackberries. Hmm. Like, have you guys tried blackberries? Yeah, oh, yeah. Like, I don't necessarily, it's not a taste I would have liked when I was younger. It's a bit astringent, but I, mm-hmm. I do. I like them. Now. So, yeah, th- that's 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 my rambling on about that for a while. No, that's that's fair. Uh, for me, it used to be soda, but I've I've actually been making a concerted effort over the last, uh, I don't know, year or so to sort of cut as much sugar out of my diet as I can because I just realized how much I was intaking. Um, and I do have a very sedentary lifestyle because I have a desk job. Um, so instead I have this wonderful miles Morales, 28 ounce water bottle, uh, that I constantly fill up. And, uh, Matt mentioned like the Mio drinks, the, the additives and stuff like that. I actually do a lot of those. Um, not a lot, like as far as like, and one time, like I diluted a lot, just enough to get a little hint of flavor. And I always make sure I grab, try to grab the ones that don't have sugar in them. Um, Mm -hmm. and I really, really like those. Um, I still drink black coffee, but for gaming, uh, that is sort of my thing or when I'm at my desk or just in general, I've also found that I like coffee, uh, because it doesn't operate like an upper for me. Um, water actually keeps me more awake than coffee does, which is, you know, normal. Uh, so it helps me stay upright at my desk. As far as snacks go, I am a sucker for savory snacks, uh, I really, really like chips, um, particularly salt and vinegar chips, and I will eat them when I'm gaming. But here's the thing. I am one of those people that I use chopsticks when I eat chips. So I actually That's have smart. It, it's That's been, smart. It's been a thing I've done for years. It's it's one of it's just it's a habit that I picked up when I started like doing miniature painting more frequently is yeah. because I would lose my grip on uh, my paintbrushes because of the oil. Uh, so instead, I would just grab a you know cheap pair of like you know wooden chopsticks from like the, the the local restaurant. But I actually have like stainless steel chopsticks now that I just use for that type of stuff instead. And I don't do a lot of it because I'm also trying to cut down on sugar or uh, salt and like the fats and things like that as well. So like little bags of salt and vinegar chips are like my favorite thing in the entire world to snack on when I'm gaming. And I'll just like pluck one or two out while I'm gaming and leave the chopsticks in and kind of go to town after. So it's, it's funny if you asked, like if you asked me this question, like 20 years ago and asking me this question now, it's just how wildly different. Oh yeah. I was Uh, absolutely the Mountain Dew and Cheetos gamer for a very long time. Yes. I mean, that's kind of, that's kind of the image. I think a lot of people have of what a gamer is, is you're sitting there with your Mountain Dew and your Cheetos. And it's like, uh, we we're getting old. Does it have cheese in it? (laughs) (laughs) I I had a a flow chart. Does it have cheese in it? Yes. Eat it. No. (laughs) Does it have, what is it made of? Is it made of meat? Yes. Eat it. Like, you know, nowadays there's actually some thought into it, but back then, yeah, no, I was just like, you know, my brain scanning around, like making the predator noise. (laughs) So, yeah. Uh And uh, there's a second part to, to Semi's question that I'm, I, I will answer, and then you guys can can kind of chime in if you want. As far as preparing foods and foods I love having prepared for me, I really like making rice and beans, which should probably surprise almost no one. Um, I just love making it. It's one of those things that, like, it's an all-day process. Uh, mm-hmm. I, I do it. It's the same way as, like, making pasta sauce. Like, I, I do it the the old-school way using, like, act, like, the tomatoes that I skin myself and, and everything else. And... I just really enjoy doing that, but I also only know how to do it for like 30 people. So when I, <laughs> so when I do it, it's a production. Uh, and then I will like have to bring leftovers. Like I think the last time I made it, I brought like two serving trays to work with me and just like left them out like with leftovers. Um, and then as far as stuff that I love having prepared for me, uh, there are two things that I absolutely like. They're 100% the weight of my heart. One, if you can make an eggplant Parmesan, I will like that is that I will melt. That is a thing that I just absolutely adore. And then the last thing is, and I ask for this every year for my birthday, 
uh, my mother's meatloaf. <laughs> I don't know how she does it because she won't give me the recipe, uh, <laughs> but it is just like it is the best dang meatloaf I've ever had in my entire life. And I just absolutely love it. So I don't know about you guys. What do you what do you guys uh, as far as cooking or prepared foods for you go? Uh, as far as someone else preparing things, it's a, it's a good like homemade mac and cheese. Ooh, because, yeah. Yeah. Like I, if I'm doing like mac and cheese, it's always like, okay, I got to throw some pasta together and kind of, you know, throw some cheese and butter in. And that's uh yeah, sure. That's mac and cheese. Oh, we used to, but, we used to do the way with my old job. We used to have like a, a potluck and uh-huh. some guy would make scratch made mac and cheese and then smoke it. Oh, but yeah, it's like someone who takes the time to like do the pasta and make a real cheese sauce and cover it in breadcrumbs and butter and put it in the oven. Like it's a, that's another level. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Also, also there was nothing quite like uh, when my grandmommy made a grilled cheese sandwich, and it was like one of those things. It's not like a fancy gourmet grilled cheese sandwich. It's like you know white bread and butter in a pan <laughs> and and like Kraft American cheese, and it's like this really particular kind of sandwich that it just like takes you back it's this whole like nostalgia thing and but i i never make anything like that for myself so i haven't had one in years but there's just like there's something about just this totally plain grilled cheese. oh yeah matt what about you there's only one thing i remember how to make from my childhood and it's something my great-grandmother clara used to make every every year she was uh, she was from Sicily. My great grandfather is from Northern Italy. I, most of my family is Tuscan, uh, but she was from Sicily and mm. she made a dish that uh, in Italy today, it's called pizza rustica. Uh, pizza just means pie. Uh, so if you see pizza, something, it doesn't, it's not, uh, it's not necessarily what we Americans call pizza. That's uh that's a very specific kind of like pizza, uh, Napoleana, whatever. So yeah, pizza rustica, isn't it like the, uh, the Easter pie? Yes, it's Easter pie. That's what we called it. Easter yeah, yeah, pie. yeah, 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 yeah. My grandmother, and, uh, my grandmother was from Sicily. Yeah, my uh, Clara's recipe was like I, I'd say ten eggs, uh, a pound of diced ham, a pound of uh, I'm trying to remember the the prosciutto type that she used. I can't. There's a lot of ingredients to it. Um, there's there's ricotta cheese uh, cubed up, uh, cheddar cheese. There's this thing is basically like a quiche on steroids. It is, <laughs> You know how quiches are light and fluffy? Uh-huh. It's thick. And it's every dense. Bite, it's very dense. Yeah. Every bite has got like, you know, heavy egg, cheese, cream, ricotta cheese, uh, the kinds of meats. Salami. And, yeah, salami. And uh, smoked uh, scamorza cheese, I believe, is one of the things that is in there a lot, too. It depends on. The, we didn't use that. That wasn't in the, in the recipe she used. And it just, it's something I can still do. We, we did it a few years ago. We made it again. We haven't made it since because it is a production. Mm. This is not a meal you go into and you make every, like, you know, I'm a little hungry. I'm going to whip up an Easter pie. It's not even a, oh, we're having some people over next week. I'm going to make an Easter pie. It's okay. Easter <laughs> is next month. I need you to start looking for X now. And what size do we want to make? Because Clara, when she made it, she used like an enormous cooking pan, like one of those old style Pyrex won't break in the oven types. Mm -hmm. And she just filled the thing. She made so much Easter pie that there would be leftovers for like into, into June, into July, there would be pizza. There would be Easter pie leftovers. Pizza Rustica would be leftover. I loved it. And it's a recipe that I remember, like I can, I don't remember it in that I can't tell you exactly how to do it, but start the process and I can do it. It's kind of like the same way I can walk places. I can't give you directions to, Yeah, I know where this is, but I can't explain it to you because I don't, I've never had to explain it. So I don't have the breakdown. It's like that. So I can make this thing. So we made it a few years ago. Mine's not as good as hers. Of course not. She was a 90 year old Sicilian woman. Of course hers was better than mine, but it's not bad. Um, I, I, I know there's stuff I can't get that she used to. Um, there's a kind of ricotta cheese that they make in Rhode Island that they don't make in Canada. Not tremendously surprising, but regardless, it, it is the thing that I can make myself. That is just the most, it's the only nostalgia I will unabashedly avail myself of without critical eye looking at it. I will just say, yes, this is from my childhood. This is a thing that I liked at a time when a lot of things weren't what I liked. Uh, It was Clara trying to bond with me. And while she loved me in her way, she was a lunatic (laughs) and you know, she was a very old Italian woman. How do you think she was, you know, 
So I actually knocked my drink over with my hand there because I was swinging my hand around because I turned into an old Italian lady for a second. There. Uh, but regardless, yeah, I just that's that's something I like to make. Uh, in terms of made for me, literally anything as long as somebody I care about made, mm-hmm. unless yeah. it's got uh, peppers in it. Peppers squelch when I cooked peppers. When I when I eat them squelch, they have to be uncooked. You have to just give me some pepper and I can eat that. Cooked peppers I cannot handle. It's too rubbery. It freaks me right out. Totally fair. Stuffed, pepper, stuffed peppers. It's like my nightmare. I can, by the way, I can make uh, eggplant parmesan, but I never do. So what I'm hearing is we're gonna have a Blizzard Watch potluck one of these days. Yeah, but there will we're gonna fly. Have to be, we're gonna fly. Have to be an experimental period where I get to work out my my my. Oh, of course. I, we'll, we'll we'll meet we'll meet somewhere you like we'll pay for matt and, and and your wife to come out and hang out with us uh we'll go harass liz and we'll just have like a big gathering it'll be fine <laughs> uh but i think that's gonna do it for today since we are quite over time uh so How did that happen How i know did that happen? it's it's wonderful when we actually talk and you know have discourse it's fantastic i love you guys <laughs> uh blizzard watch is made possible due to the generous contributions at patreon.com slash blizzard watch your continued support means that this podcast signing community is able to thrive and grow. Blizzard Watch supporters enjoy exclusive benefits like early access to the podcast, better chance of having your question answered on our podcast or the queue and an ads for your site experience. And I almost broke out in Spanish again. It's going to happen one of these days. Yes. All right, Matt, do you want to take us out? Uh, yeah, wow. Again, another one. David. I love this. This is like Christmas. <laughs> this is great. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, thank you guys so much for being here for us for this very special uh, Freaky Friday episode of Blizzard Watch on the Tuesday. Um, thank you to Joe for stepping in and doing my job for me. Uh, and thank you to Liz, both for letting him do so and do for also stepping in and doing my job for me earlier when she wrote the email for this show. Uh, thanks to all you for being here. And thanks to me for, I don't know, not dying this week. It's, it's, I, mean, I, we I feel like that. I should be proud of that. Some- as some weeks, that is real hard. Listen, to sur- at it. we live in a world where survival is difficult. If you can say you survived, you should be proud of that. Yes. Mm-hmm. Uh, also, th- thank you to the very nice nurse who really tried her best, and it wasn't her fault that I just was having it. Uh, anyway, guys, thanks for being here. It's been the Blizzard Watch Podcast. Um, Cyberpunk 2077's new expansion is coming out next week. I have no idea if you'll ever hear from me again. They have Transmog and a whole new revamp game, so... If you don't remember me as I was, <laughs> I'm crazy addicted to transport. Bye, everybody. Bye.